Welcome to episode 5 of Gun Guides, where I show you how to get, use, and master every gun family in Spiral Knights. Today I'll be taking a look at the very fun to use Torter Drone Guns. To get your hands on a Torter Drone Gun, you'll have to farm the event March of the Torter Drones. After the event starts, you'll want to farm Fiend Theme Depths, because every monster in the Fiend family during the event has a chance to drop a special material called a Glyph. There are five different kinds of glyphs, and by combining five of each kind, you can make a fiendish ID card at the mysterious alchemy machine. Before tackling the mission, be sure to grab a party as this mission is no pushover. After each Tortodrone is defeated, be sure to smash its corpse to get your ancient shells. To craft one Tortodrone gun, you'll need a total of 28 ancient shells. Each of these guns build off of a unique 2 star. For Elemental, the Prismatech Alchemer. For Shadow, the Shadowtech Alchemer for piercing the auto gun, and for normal, the blaster. Torter gun weapons have the most unique attack pattern of any gun in the game. The basic attack is made up of a lunge forward combined with a short ranged projectile. This means that one attack can give you two hits because both the lunge and the bullet could do damage. The torter gun's charge attack flings you backwards and volleys six crystals into the sky. Upon reaching the ground, each crystal creates a small ring of initial damage and stay lodged in the ground for a couple seconds, dealing damage and knockback to any monster who touches them. These guns are extremely fun to use and inventive in design, but they're rarely a good option. There are a ton of problems with this gun in general, so let's go over some of the downsides. In parties, it can be really difficult to have enemies walk into your crystals because of the split aggro, which makes it really frustrating to use. The knockback dealt from the charge to the knight is way too risky with not even nearly enough payoff. To make matters worse, enemies see the crystals as natural obstacles, and they'll just try and stroll around them most of the time without even running into them. The tortoguns are also unique in the wrong way with their basic attacks. A gunner wants long range and distance from the enemy, and the basic attack doesn't provide any of that, it's actually the opposite. The last thing a gunner wants is to be lunged straight into the enemy every single time they attack. And just to top it all off, just in case you didn't think matters could get any worse, Torter Guns also lack pretty heavily in damage, meaning you'll have to be really type effective whenever you use them. It may sound weird, but it's actually pretty important to know how the charge attack is coded, at least to my understanding. Knowing about this really helps with positioning the charge. When you fire the charge, the gun doesn't actually volley crystals into the air. What's happening here is that your knight shoots a small invisible flare. This flare, once hitting terrain or an enemy, decides where the crystals will end up falling. For example, consider how long it takes for the long range crystals to fall, and how long the short ranged ones take. With the short range charge, the flare finds the wall right away, so the crystals appear almost immediately. With the long range charge, there's a full second of waiting before the flare hits its max range, and the crystals decide where to fall. This invisible flare is also small enough so that you can shoot it past an enemy and have your charge go all the way behind it. Take for instance me shooting at this gun puppy. When I aim beside it, the flare misses and so the charge lands far off to the side. However, when I face it completely, the flare detects it and the charge falls right on top of it. In other cases, you can shoot the flare through a gap in a group of enemies and have your charge go all the way past them, missing them completely. Oddly enough, Mechanites and Almirian Crusaders will both try and shield the flare and not the crystals. This means that by the time the crystals fall on them, they won't even have their shield up. Tortoguns end up being really solid counters to both Mechanites and Almirian Crusaders this way. Thankfully, Tortoguns are made a bit better by some tricky techniques, one of these being the good old flash charge. Tortoguns have the most unique flash charge in the entire game, in my opinion. Releasing the charge with time to spare on the buff timer allows for a knight to turn and reposition a whole new charge wherever they like. It's two for the price of one. Be sure to have a lot of CDR and practice this in the training hall beforehand because the timing is pretty tight. Too soon and the second charge won't fall, and too late and the second charge won't be able to be repositioned. Hitting the sweet spot lets you cover most of an arena with crystals, which as you can imagine can be quite useful. If you remember what charge chaining is, it doesn't work with the Torbogun's charge attacks. After finishing a Torbogun charge, you have to make sure that you hold shield instead of attack before charging up another one. If you try to charge chain and hold attack after your charge, you'll end up firing off a basic attack instead and reloading. The main reason this gun even sees use is the super unique and fun charge attack. 
Half the damage from the charge, though, comes from the lodged crystals, so it's important to try and use them to your advantage. You have to remember that while enemies can't walk through the crystals, players can, so that means that kiting through a clump of crystals can be a pretty safe option. Remember to be creative with the knockback as well. Enemies won't always want to walk into your crystals, so using shield bumps or the basic attacks knockback can be a good way to get some bonus value out of your charge. If you see a teammate using the torter gun charge, you can help them out too by using your knockback to bump enemies into the crystals. Another technique I found that's pretty useful is that shooting the charge into the corner and hiding inside your crystals while preparing your next charge is a decent way to protect yourself and damage enemies at the same time, provided there are no projectiles hitting you in the meantime. This is just one example as to how to be creative with the charge, but there are a lot of different ways that you can find out for yourself. Are tortoguns ever the best option for a level? No. Will tortoguns ever get some love in the form of buffs? Probably never. However, I love giving lesser used weapons their moment of glory, so here's to the tortoguns. It's a sick looking weapon that offers a super unique playstyle seen nowhere else in Spiral Knights, albeit probably not the most useful. That's it for the tortoguns. Do you have a gun line you'd like to see me cover next or have a new idea for Spiral Knights related content? Let me know.